Hi, once again with a new video. I'm Viraj, and this is my YouTube channel, Match by Viraj. This is a lesson two under fractions, and in this lesson, I'll be teaching you how to add and subtract fractions. You can go to the description below and get the link to my previous lesson under fractions, and also you will have to learn a little bit of LCM or the lowest common multiple. Also, the link for that particular video is in the description below. Make sure you subscribe Match by Viraj and click on the bell icon so that you will be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Right, children? In adding and subtracting fractions, there's a rule. And the rule is always the denominator should be the same either for you to add or subtract any fractions. Now let's look at some examples where the denominator is the same. That is, in the question itself, the denominator is given as same. Later on, we will look at some examples where when the denominators are different, how we are going to add and subtract fractions. Right, children? If you look at this example, we have 3 over 5 plus 1 over 5. You see that the denominators are the same. When the denominators are same, what we can do is we can simply add the numerators, which gives us the answer as 4 over 5. Let's look at this. Hmm? Very easy. If I draw uh, something like a pie chart, you have three parts that are colored. And here you have one part that is colored. And if they were to be added, the final answer would look like four parts that are being colored. Therefore, you see that when the denominators are same, we can easily add the numerators and get the answer. Children, if you look at this example, 304 minus 104. Yes, still you see that the denominators are the same. When the denominators are the same, again, if it is addition, you can add. Now in this case, it is subtraction. So you can easily subtract them, which is 3 minus 2 is 2 over 4. Now again, if I draw two diagrams and if I subtract these two, in this I have three parts. From that, I have removed one part. From that, I have removed one part. So, what is the answer? The answer that I get is, so from these three parts, if I remove this particular part, what am I getting? I am left off with is two parts. Children, if you look at the example of the board, there are two mixed fractions. There are two methods in which you can solve. Now, let's consider this as method one. In method one, what we do is, we consider these two whole numbers and add them together first. One plus two. Then we add the proper fractions. One plus two is three plus now you see that the denominators are the same. Therefore, when the denominators are the same, we simply add the numerators. Therefore, the answer is 3 and 5 over 6. Whole number 3 and 5 over 6. Again, when it is 1 and 2 over 6 plus 2 and 3 over 6, we add the two whole numbers first. 1 plus 2. To that, you add the two proper fractions. 1 plus 2 and then you take 2 over 6 plus 3 over 6. 1 plus 2 is 3. To that you add 2 over 6 plus 3 over 6. Since the denominators are same, we just have to simply add the numerators. Therefore, 3 plus 5 over 6 and the final answer that we get is 3 and 5 over 6. And the method 2 of following such mixed fractions uh, is as follows. First, you convert them convert all mixed fractions into improper fractions. 
Just in case if you missed my previous lesson, you can go to the link over here and look how the mixed fractions are converted into improper fractions. Now, 6 and 1. 6 and 1, they are multiplied and to that you add 2. Therefore, 6 plus 2 over 6 plus Again, 6 and 2, they are multiplied and that you add 3, which is 12 plus 3 over 6, 5. This is 8 over 6 plus 15 over 6. Now, as you can see, children, the denominators are the same. So, basically what I have to do is, I have just simply add the numerators. 8 plus 15 is 23 over 6. Now, you see that 23 over 6, this is an improper fraction. So, I should convert into a mixed fraction. What I do is, I divide 23 by 6. 6 times 3 is 18. What is remaining is 5. Therefore, 23 over 6 can now be written as whole number 3 and 5 over 6. Which is equal to the previous answer. Uh, in which we did the sum in as method 1. Right children? Now let's look at two fractions where they are mixed fractions and they are subtracted from one another. Under method 1, you see that there are two whole numbers. We can subtract the two whole numbers one from the other. You see that 3 minus 2. And now these two small fractions, the proper fractions are then considered. 3 minus 2 is 1. 305 minus 105. Since the denominators are the same, what we can do is we can simply subtract the numerators. Therefore, what we have is 1 and 205 as the answer. Again, when it is 3 and 305 minus 2 and 105, you subtract the two whole numbers first and then you consider the two proper fractions, which is 305 minus 105. In the numerator, so since the denominators are the same, you can simply subtract the numerators. 3 minus 1 is 2 and the denominator remains to be as 5. Children, if you look at the uh, question again and if you try to solve it in the second method, we convert all mixed fractions into improper fractions. That is, 5 is multiplied by 3, 15 and to that you add 3 over 5 minus 5 is multiplied by 2 which is 10 minus sorry 10 plus 1 over 5 so what we have here is 18 over 5 minus 11 over 5 5 so now you see that the denominators are the same so basically what you do is you subtract the numerators which gives us 7 over 5 when i divide 7 by 5 5 times 1 5 and the remainder is 2 therefore now I can write 7 over 5 as a mixed fraction that is 1 and 2 over 5. Therefore children 3 and 3 over 5 we converted this mixed fraction into an improper fraction. 2 and 1 over 5 the mixed fraction is converted into an improper fraction. Then since the denominators are same we subtracted the numerators and finally we got the answer as 7 upon 5 which is an improper fraction. So, when I divide 7 by 5, I get the answer as 1 and 2 over 5, which is a mixed fraction. Children, let's look at two fractions where the denominators are different. Now, you see that this has got a denominator of 2 and here the denominator is 3. Therefore, we should find a common, common denominator. So, now the question arises, how do you find the common denominator? Yes, we should follow the method of LCM or the lowest common multiple. There is a lesson that I have done under LCM and you can go to the link over here and see the lesson. Now, you take 2 and 3, then you divide 2, 1, means as 3, 3, 1 and 1. Therefore, the LCM is 2 into 3 which is 6. Fine. Now children, there are two methods in which you can solve this simple sum. Let's look at method 1. Method 1. 
1 over 2, this denominator 2 has to be converted to 6. Therefore, 2 is multiplied by 3, so that it becomes 6. Then you multiply 1 by 3. When you multiply 1 by 3, it becomes 3. What you should understand is that, if you multiply the denominator by a certain number, you should multiply the numerator also by that same particular number. In this case, our intention is to convert 2 and 3 into a common denominator which is 6. In order for us to do that, 2 should be multiplied by 3 for it to become 6. If in the fraction 1 over 2, if 2 is multiplied by 3, then the numerator should also be multiplied by 3. Right. 2 over 3. Now 3 has to be converted into 6. Therefore you multiply 3 by 2. Unlike here we multiply 2 by 3. Now 3 is multiplied by 2. So 2 should also be multiplied by 2 because if you multiply the denominator by a certain number you should multiply the numerator also by that same particular number. 2 into 2 is 4. Now instead of half 1 over 2 I can write 3 over 6. Instead of 2 over 3 now I can write 4 over 6. Now you can see that the denominators have gradually become the same. Here it was 2, here it was 3, two different denominators. So we converted them to a single denominator. 3 over 6 plus 4 over 6. So when the denominators are the same, we can easily add the numerators, which is 7 over 6. Now, 7 we divide by 6. 6 times 1, 6 and the remainder is 1. Therefore, now we can write this as 1 and 1 over 6. Simple as that. Now children, let's try to solve the sum in the second method. Right. In this second method, what you should understand is that, what if I multiplied everything by 6 and I divided everything by 6? What does that mean? For example, if I have x, a certain number, I multiply this x by 2, then I divide it by 2, which I can write this as 2 multiplied by x and divided by 2. 2 multiplied by x is how much? 2x. And that particular 2x is now divided by 2. What am I left with? I am left with the number that I already began with, which is x. I multiply x by 2. Then I divide that number by 2. Finally, I end up with the number which I started off with. Similarly, I multiply all of these by 6 and I divide everything by 6. Why did I choose 6? Because now you see that the denominators 2 and 3, they are different. So, using the method of LCM, the lowest common multiple, we found the common denominator to be 6. Yeah. If I multiply everything by 6 and divide by 6, it would look like 6 multiplied by 1 over 2 plus 2 over 3, whole thing divided by 6. Yes. Now, this can be written as 6 into half plus 6 into 2 over 3, everything divided by 6. What I did was, from the outside number, I have multiplied the inside number. 6 into half plus 6 into 2 over 3. Now, you can easily simplify. 2 times 1, 2 times 3. 3 times 1, 3 times 2. Therefore, 3 into 1, 3 plus 2 into 2, 4 over 6. That is 7 over 6. Now, we know that 7 over 6 is 1 and 1 over 6. So, it's up to you to decide whether to do a sum in method 1 or in method 2. Right, children? Now, I have used uh, two mixed fractions where they are subtracted from one another and they have different denominators right first i'm going to convert both of them into two improper fractions 10 is multiplied by 2 to that i add 3 over 10 minus 15 is multiplied by 1 plus 1 over 15 which is 20 plus 3 over 10 minus 15 plus 1 over 15. That is 23 over 10 minus 16 over 15. Now, you see that the denominators are different. 
obviously we will have to come to a common denominator and that we should use the LCM or the lowest common multiple. 10 and 15, we start dividing by the prime numbers, the smallest possible which is 2, 5, 15, we divide by 3, 5, 5, and we divide by 5, 1 and 1. Therefore, the LCM is 2 into 3 into 5 which is 30. Now, using method 1, my intention is to convert 23 over 10 to a number with the denominator of 30. Therefore, 10 is multiplied by 3. Therefore, 23 should also be multiplied by 3, which is 69. Here, 16 over 15 is to be converted into 30. Now, 15 is multiplied by 2 to become 30. Therefore, 16 should also be multiplied by 2. When 16 is multiplied by 2, the answer is 32. Now, instead of 23 over 10, I can write 69 over 30 minus 16 over 15, I can write 32 over 30. Where the answer that I get is 37 over 30. 37 over 30. When I divide 37 by 30, what I get is 30 times 1, 30 and the remainder is 7. Therefore, I write it as 1 and 7 over 30. Very easy, very simple. Children, let's uh, solve the same sum in method 2. In method 2, again, I convert them into uh, two improper fractions. 20 and 3, 23 over 10 minus 16 over 15. Now, I have found they seem to be 30. Therefore, I multiply everything by 30 and divide by 30, which is 30 into 23 over 10 minus 30 into 16 over 15 divided by 30. 10 times 1, 10 times 3, 15 times 1, 15 times 2, which is 3 into 23, the answer is 69 minus 32 over 30. The answer is 69 minus 32 is 37 over 30. And when 37 is divided by 30, the answer is 1 and 7 over 30. So again, 2 and 3 over 10 minus 1 and 1 over 15. We convert both of them into two improper fractions. We found the LCM. We multiply and divide by the, at the same time, which results in this calculation where you come up with the common denominator of 30, subtract the two numerators, 37 over 30, which we can write as 1 and 7 over 30. Children, hope you understood today's lesson and the links of the previous lessons are given in the description below. So make sure that you share these videos among your friends. Also, subscribe Maths by Viraj and click on the bell icon so that you will be notified as soon as I upload a new video.